Welcome to Radio Arizona RV, episode number two. So now we're going to be talking about wheel bearings and trailer brakes today. And let me specify trailer wheel bearings, not motorhome or anything else, just travel trailer and fifth wheel. And it applies to cargo trailers, utility trailers as well, horse trailers. Boat trailers are a little bit different because they get submerged in water, so we're not really going to talk about that. And then we'll spend a little bit of time on trailer brakes since there's not a whole lot to say about trailer brakes. First with trailer brakes, you know, they the brake shoes last almost forever. You might get 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 miles on a set of trailer brakes. It's going to vary depending on the person, their driving techniques, how they drive, uphills, downhills, flatland, Texas versus Oregon. It just depends. Now, trailer brakes sometimes will start cracking prematurely, and you might have to replace them because of that. But magnets are probably the thing that fail the most when it comes to trailer brakes. The electric magnets wear out, they get thin, and then pretty soon they just fall apart or they stop working. And in most cases today, when you replace the magnets, it's just easier to buy a complete complete backing plate with the magnet and the shoes, the springs, everything on it. Just take your old one off, four bolts, two wires, bolt on the new one, and pretty much adjust up the brakes after you put the drums back on, and you're ready to go. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Trailer magnets have become, you know, they're very expensive where you can get a complete backing plate for just a few dollars more. So it's well worth it. It's just spend a few extra dollars and have a complete new system. So that's basically it for trailer brakes. You want to adjust them, you know, a couple times a year to make sure that they are working properly and test them. But it's pretty simple. <clears throat> they either work or they don't. So now let's talk about trailer wheel bearings and how often you should inspect them, what we should be looking for, what kind of grease to use. You know, wheel bearings fail quite a bit from my experience, what I see. At Arizona RV Parts Center, we get people coming in quite often with wheel bearings that have burned up because they didn't check them. They didn't check that they were greased or the spindle nuts were loose. They're not paying attention to it. They're just letting the maintenance thing go, and it ends up costing them a lot more than just wheel bearings. You can either ruin the drum, you can ruin the drum, the spindle, and the bearings. So it can cost a lot of money. It can be a lot of downtime on the side of the road, depending on where you're at. You might not be able to just go find a new drum. You might not be able to find the wheel bearings. So maintaining them is very important. And I also want to say, before I forget, to keep an extra set of wheel bearings and grease seals on hand. It's not that expensive, but it can be a lifesaver or a time saver or even two sets. You just never know. You know, quite often if one is bad, you might find that the others are, are getting bad or they are bad. So it's not going to hurt, and eventually you're going to use them anyways because you'll have a bad wheel bearing sooner or later. But the key is to, you know, once a year or t every ten or 12,000 miles, you're going to hear varying things on this. Some people say you can go forever, but that's not true but there's varying timetables. Some people do it twice a year, which is probably too much. But you want to at least inspect the, the bearings once a year by pulling off the wheels and physically looking at them, wiping off the grease, seeing if the bearings are starting to discolor, if there's any metal in the grease, if the grease is melted or has a burning smell to it. So it's not that difficult to do. You know, I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play here. You just jack up the trailer and get the wheel off the ground. You're going to take the lug nuts off, pull the wheel off. Then you have the the drum, and then you have the uh, bearing cap, the dust cap. You're going to take that off with a pair of bearing pliers, or I mean, uh, excuse me, dust cap pliers, without bending it and tweaking it out of shape. Then there's a cotter pin. You take that out, and you always put in new cotter pins. Don't use the old ones. They're cheap, easy to find. Take the nut off and slide the drum off, and there you go. There's your bearings. So you'll be able to see them. The, the inner bearing is going to pop right out. The inner bearing is, or the, the inner bearings, excuse me, the outer bearing is going to pop right out, but the inner bearing is going to be behind the grease seal and the drum. So you'll have to remove the grease seal. And this is something, just whenever you do this, just always replace the grease seals. They're cheap. It's not even worth trying to save one, get one out in such good shape that you could reuse it. It's not worth it. If the grease seal goes bad, you'll lose your brakes. So for six bucks, three bucks, whatever it is, just replace them. So after you get them out, you're going to want to clean them and make sure that all the grease and dirt's off. And then you're going to repack them, whether it's by hand or a little packing 
tool, whatever you have available to you, but you want to pack them, not just wipe grease on it. You want to pack the grease into it. So you'll be able to see, you know, and if you're not an expert on it or not sure, get a neighbor to help you. There's always somebody in the RV parks or, you know, if you, uh, or if you're at home doing this, you probably have a neighbor that knows something about cars or automotive type stuff. You know, there's always somebody you can consult. You can go to the automotive, like a, a an automotive shop or an RV store and ask them to look at the bearings and tell you if they're good. If you can't figure it out on your own, buy a new set, compare them. Because you're going to need a spare anyways. So you've, you've done all this, and there's a reason why. Because wheel bearings fail quite often. And so when you do this, you want to make sure you're doing it right. You don't want to take shortcuts. It's just not worth it. So once a year, you're going to want to do this to either the two wheels or four wheels, whatever you have. You want to take them apart and double check. It's very well worth the time. Now, you can have shops do this as well. Of course, they're going to charge for it. But when you look on the Internet, there's a lot of negative, a lot of negativity towards the repair shops. A lot of claims that they're not doing this right. Now, that might be true. It's hard to say. How would we know? You know, you can always go to your local RV repair center if you're not inclined to do it yourself and talk to them. You know, tell them your concerns that you've heard, you know, that maybe not them, but a lot of shops aren't doing it right. It poses problems. You know, I don't know if it's true or not because it's really not that complicated of a thing to do. Now, it would be one thing if they said they were doing it and they weren't. Now, that would pose a real problem. But most often you can do this without ever having creating a, an issue for yourself. So you can either pay to have it done or do it yourself. But the main thing is that you want to do it. You know, this is one of the easiest things to get lazy and put off. You know, just now nah, I'll do it later. You know, like where we're located in Welton, Arizona, near Yuma, we get a lot of winter visitors here during the winter time. And, you know, for them, if they're going to be long-term camping, the trailer is going to be sitting. So it's not the time to do it right when you get there. They'd be better off waiting until they're getting ready to leave. But it does become one more thing that they have to do because grease does go bad sitting. You know, it can get condensation in it, moisture. So it'd be better to wait until just before they leave to do it. And, and then they're set. They got nice fresh grease in there for the ride home. And then if they go RVing during the summertime, then they're good to go. But, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Sometimes you can do this while you're out camping because it's not that hard. You know, probably the biggest piece of equipment you'd have to carry would be a jack to jack up the trailer. But you should have that anyways. You know, make sure you have a jack to get your, your spare or your tire off if you ever get a blowout, which we know that's going to happen. It always does. So, you know, you, the maintenance is extremely important, and what a lot of people do is they, they check their wheel bearings with uh, infrared thermometers they're traveling. They'll check the, the wheels and the, the hub to see what kind of temperature they're running at, to see if they're hotter, if one wheel's hotter than the other one. They might compare it to their tow vehicle. It's not a bad thing to do. You know, you can prevent a problem. But you might get tied to a, a thermometer and things change two degrees. Next thing you're panicked, what do you do? Well, two degrees isn't anything. It's going to have to be much hotter than that for there to be a problem. But it can be an indicator. You know, if, the, if one hub is extremely hotter than another, then you might have a bearing go bad or you might have a brake problem with the, drum, or with the brakes sticking. But when a bearing goes bad, generally you hear a, a whirring noise, then you hear a grinding noise, and that's definitely a sign. So you want to pay attention to that as well. So I hope this gives you some basic information here. I know it's it's not a hands-on lesson, but for to but to see it in real life, Trailer Life has a nice little uh, demonstration on their website. And what I'll do is post a link on our website in with this podcast, so you can check it out at TrailerLife.com. They have pictures, and it's a little more descriptive. It gives you an idea how to torque the nut, you know, which, what process to take, what foot pounds to put it at, and what to do. So it's it's kind of a, a recap of what we discussed here today, but this gives you a little more insight, the importance of it. This is something you don't want to put off. So take your time, do it right, and that way you don't have to worry when you're traveling down the road of a wheel bearing burning up in the middle of the night or the middle of the day in some place where you don't want to be. You know, like Welton, Arizona. Just kidding. It's not that bad here, but you know what I mean. Stuck on the side of the road trying to find a $18 part that might take three days to get.
and hopefully it's the right one the first time, right? Probably won't be, but you'll find out the hard way. So stay on top of it. Don't let the maintenance slide. So I want to thank you again for listening to Radio Arizona RV, episode number two. So next coming up, we're going to talk about trailer tire safety. So that'll be episode number three. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. Thank you.